Chaos engineering involves experimenting on a software system in order to build confidence in its capability to withstand turbulent and unexpected conditions. Let's look at how organizations can implement it. First, segregate the system into key components and then test it without them. Once you understand what happens and how to fix it, intentionally break the system in pre-production environments and develop a strategy to manage the outages caused. Once the incident can be safely managed in non-production environments, you can test it in production. To do this, first, introduce failure of key components in production. Once the team can deal with this, escalate to introducing database failure, again in production, and finally, you can introduce a total system failure. In each of these steps, look at holistic logging, such as what factors keep the full service available and identify dependencies. Handle errors and recover manually at first and as learning increases, recovery can be automated. This allows the team to learn from real failures but still keep an element of control. Chaos engineering also helps identify how much of the system an outage affects known as the blast radius, enabling engineers to design strategies to mitigate the effect of future incidents. Successful chaos engineering depends on lots of concepts we've discussed in previous modules, particularly automated recovery. Immutable infrastructure as code is necessary to automate recovery and automated tests must cover all system state and functional code. Deploy holistic logging and monitoring systems to make the service observable and create self-healing infrastructure where appropriate. Tools like Kubernetes or AWS auto-scaling can be used to detect impaired instances of servers or containers and destroy, replace and maintain infrastructure at a defined level. These tools can also automatically scale infrastructure or applications up and down based on demand and execute maintenance commands on the fly, such as re-indexing databases when queries are running slow. Both these tools can be fully integrated with monitoring services and the tools that will be used should be agreed on before building the system. In this way, a self-healing system can be created where issues are detected and resolved automatically without operator intervention.